After a full teardown and rebuild, the rear engine of the 666 is officially back from the dead and hanging in the wash bay like a side of beef, waiting for its turn in the paint stripping gauntlet. It runs now, but it's got to look the part too. So in this process, we are basically going to go through and take all the paint off the engine. Um, is what we're going to do is, in the last previous process before, it was split from here forward. This was away. Um, now, as you can see, it is assembled back together. And basically, is what we're going to do is we're going to use some paint stripper. We're going to go around and try to liquefy as much paint as we can to make the sanding process and the prepping process a lot easier. In this process, it's really nice to make sure that there again, just like sandblasting, everything has been plugged. Not really, don't really have to tape too much because we're just using water instead of the uh, media blasting, sandblasting. Basically, we just put it on. Put her on and we'll let her eat for a little bit. While Jesse lets the paint stripper work its magic, we shift gears to the bowl of the 666, still parked outside MTS. Blasting knocked off the rust and uncovered a few gremlins hiding underneath. Yeah, so after the blasting process, we kind of got to see a lot more of the damage that was involved through its life. And uh, a lot of what was compromised was not only the floor of the bowl, which is what you see here kind of cut out of the scraper, the floor would be the bottom part right here, and we have two sidewalls right here on the sides. And a lot of it was patched up, you know, after years of moving dirt. Stuff would get dinked around with rocks and stuff. So to do it right from this whole compromised position of the bowl, we felt that it was best to just rebuild the entire structure itself. And we are blessed to have the resources and the manpower to do such things. So on the inside, you can see a lot of uh, patch plates. So as the steel wore down, the contractor, you know, trying to get the most bang for his buck would just start slapping more and more steel. So a lot of this iron that you see here is not even factory. It's basically just field modifications just to keep the scraper moving for the contractor. And one of the major things, if you want to take a look where what we call the cutting edge of the scraper, this whole floor is deflected by about an inch and a half. So the contractor would probably hit a big boulder and obviously something's got to give and this whole bowl uh, floor just pretty much uh, deflected upwards about an inch. So that was completely compromised on that end. And if we move to the outside of the side walls, you can kind of see uh, what Caterpillar runs is the cellular, cellular design for their structure. And so there's no support in between these two weld joints. And when scrapers and uh, excavator buckets and things would hit the sidewall and completely oil can this structure. Now we could just patch it up and put a facade plate on here. But what'll happen is when you put a sheet of steel on top of this, it'll just potato chip from the welding that will, that will get involved here. So. The best thing to do, as previously said, was to completely rebuild the whole entire unit. Killian takes us inside for a look at the game plan. Rebuilding the bowl of the 666 isn't a patch job, it's a full-on overhaul. So I spent a couple of days basically redrawing the geometry of the uh, 666 bowl there. And we can kind of see the uh, overall structure of what we have designed here. So. Um, this is what you'd call the bowl of the scraper. This is basically the, uh, the money-making part of the scraper. It's going to be carrying the dirt, scraping it and carrying it, and then also ejecting it as well. So um, basically trying to keep it as factory as possible. Um, the only thing we're going to be changing is the materials and processes. So for example, we're going to be running a lot of hard ox uh, wear plate. Um, and then also we're going to be running a lot of uh, 100 KSI um, steel for the sidewall so we don't get that denting that we've seen before in uh, more abusive uh, applications. So is it safe to say that the 666 is getting an upgrade? Correct, yeah. I would almost call this not so much a restoration, but a restoration modification improvement. So it'll look the same, it'll just uh, material-wise, it'll be much stronger. So. To give us a clear picture of the bones going into the beast, Killian walks us over to the fab shop. Fun fact, 
When it was new, the 666 could haul 54 cubic yards in one gulp. That's about five dump trucks worth of dirt in one bite. So right here is a uh, piece of Hardox 450 steel. It's got a, it's a, what they call an abrasion resistant seal. So it's got a lot uh, higher hardness than your typical mild steel. Um, a Hardox 450 is just a brand name from SSAB. They're a steel mill. And the 450 stands for 450 Brunel, which equates to roughly about Rockwell C47. So to kind of give you uh, an idea, a, uh, a hand file for metal is about Rockwell C61. So it's about, you know, 15 points below that. And this is what's going to be really uh, getting kind of against the dirt and the rock and whatnot. And that's essentially what it's designed for. And then on top of here, we have our CNC plasma cutter. So this will be actually cutting out the sheets of steel for the 666. It's what they call a kinetic plate processor. Not only can it do CNC plasma, it can do oxyacetylene, but also machining operations like drilling and tapping and milling too. So, Not everything on the 666 is getting tossed. Some parts still have fight left in them. And in this restoration, anything that passes inspection gets a second lease on life. So. This is essentially uh, what's kind of left over of the rear frame of the 666. What we saw outside was the bowl portion that was no good. And these are a lot of the com components we're gonna be reusing for the project. This is what they call the rear frame. And because it is a rear engine machine as well, you have the transmission case that's kind of welded integrally into the actual frame itself. So these are the good bits that we're gonna be saving and gonna be putting the new bowl uh, back together on. Back in the wash bay, Jesse gears up to blast away the old paint and stripper sludge, like a spa day chemical peel. Years of grime, grease, and paint, gone. Pores, cleansed. Confidence, restored. So here we have our fantastic pressure washer system. Uh, 3,000 PSI, it, it has hot water, it'll go up to about 100 and, let me double check, 240 degrees. Um, of heat at 3,000 PSI. Um, it does about eight and a half gallons per minute. On, on this one, instead of using a zero tip, a zero tip would be just pretty much like a straight, stead, steady stream of water. This is what we call a turbo nozzle. So as the water comes out, it actually spins at a, a higher rate to help basically get the paint off. So that is going to be our next step to the engine. So here's a dumb question. Why do we wash the engine versus, to get the paint off versus actually blasting it? So with washing an engine, water is a lot easier to deal with um, as far as using pressure to remove the paint versus sandblasting. Um, when you sandblast that shot and that media can tend to end up in places it shouldn't be. Um, if somebody left a cap or something open and a speck, in, or, speck or some of that got in there, uh, that wouldn't be a good outcome where water is at least a little bit more manageable. Um, for instance, there is an alternator on there. Um, when that would, if shot was left in there and a battery was hooked up to the, you know, to run it, that would basically be a huge ginormous magnet and it would attract anything that was, would have been left behind. So not chancing critical parts on a critical engine, this would be the best route. With washing wrapped, paint specialist Ryan Lightfoot calls in Old Red. This classic loader makes quick work of the lift using the frame support arms like a set of steel chopsticks. The engine gets hauled across the lot to the prep bay. Next stop, primer, paint, and a new lease on life.